Hello, hello, my beauties and bees, and thank you so much for joining me for Cryptic Corner, where we explore the unexplained, the supernatural, the paranormal and hidden, the mysterious, the alien, the accursed, and the forbidden. I am your host, Miss Bumble Bree, and today we are going to be uh, visiting a new channel that we haven't seen before, or we haven't visited before. I figured this was a great way to wrap up the year. Um, this is Life in the Hive. We are watching this on uh, the 30th of December, so this is the last show of the year. Uh, if you're watching this on the premiere you and you want to join us, you just come on uh, the channel at 9.30 a.m. Saturday morning, any any Saturday of the week, and you can join this live chat over here, and we uh, we always have a good a good fun time every Saturday, so uh, you don't want to miss it. Um, you can participate and ask questions, and yeah, we're gonna dive right into the weeds of the woo here. Um, so it's 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 gonna be something you want to participate in. And don't deny yourself this opportunity. All right, so this is going to be a eyes on the skies episode and that's how we're gonna we're gonna end this year we're gonna turn our eyes up towards the heaven and ask ourselves hey what was that thing and then see if uh the angry astronaut agrees with us this is the angry astronaut who talks about such things as Alien super weapons, signs of life detected by NASA, Musk first on Mars, let's see, asteroid defense plan, spherical UFOs, yeah, so we're going to be, we're really going to be getting into the thick of it if you can't tell by now. Alright, so, without further ado, this is our boy. This is our angry astronaut. He's going to tell us about the mysterious object that's moving through our uh, solar system. A bulletin. Good afternoon on today's angry bulletin. Finally, after numerous media stories to the contrary, it has been definitively proven that Oumuamua was neither an asteroid nor a comet. A recent paper released by an astronomer who is not Avi Loeb has conclusively demonstrated. You all, are you all familiar with Oumuamua, the uh, object moving through our solar system? Uh, I think first sighted in 2015. I had some stuff pulled up on it and I closed it. Oh. There we go. Pull it right back up. I even had the official document, but it was uh, behind a paywall. So I'll pull up the CNN report on it and we'll look at that too. That the hydrogen outgassing model that so many astronomers had been clinging. I was wrong. It was 2017, not 15. The Moomoo was 2017. Moving to, to explain Oumuamua's bizarre and unnatural behavior is simply impossible. So what is Oumuamua? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. We are going to be bringing you a triple shot of alien content uh, for the holidays. Yesterday, we had a brief episode, an angry clip, I guess. So, yeah, he does a lot of UFO and alien coverage, obviously. Uh, he is a big channel, though. I'm not going to put him down. He's doing good. 123K. Not bad. All this video alone has 52k views and it's only six days old. People are really excited about his explanations for heavenly bodies. To be the best way to describe that one about a UFO that was spotted in Minnesota that continues to confound researchers today. We kind of know what it looks like, but not really, Native Atheist. Uh, it's vaguely uh, uh, long uh, and cigar-shaped sort of laterally compressed uh the, but like the length like anywhere from three uh 300 was it 300 meters to 3,000 meters or something it's estimated to be 377 by 364 by 62 feet 
which is uh, 115 by 111 by 19 meters in size. So not, not huge, 19 meters uh, is pretty thin. Hey, we're gonna be talking about Oumuamua, and then tomorrow, by popular demand, we're gonna be talking about alien super weapons that we may or may not have observed in operation throughout the cosmos and i'm not joking about that but we're not going to get into that in alien this super weapons you're kind of making me sad i didn't pick that topic but uh i did i was a muamua was what i came here to what i i found this channel looking for stuff people talking about a muamua more so than the other way around because i knew that there was an alien theory about it and i've been meaning to cover it this episode, we're going to talk about a muamua. So one thing that really annoys the hell out of me about a muamua. I mean, you're called, I'm called the angry astronaut, and I want to be very clear as to one of the things that makes me angrier than anything else is how the media continues to cling to debunked theories about phenomena that may have an artificial extraterrestrial origin, and then a natural explanation comes out, and that natural explanation is subsequently debunked a few months later, but the media continues to cling to that rational mon- Well, so th there's new stuff that came- th this article I have here, um, well, it's not new new, it was from March. There was some new information, though, I thought. Uh, let me see. A Muamua. I had a different article up, I guess. A Muamua. Stellar. Keep saying a Muamua like that's going to make something change. A Mua. Mua. There we go. Because there was like new, a new press release just couple days ago where is it i'm so annoyed because i had it all pulled up and then i i do this like every morning i close all my stuff like a morin like a dumbass um <clears throat> what is the mua mua and why is nasa terrified uh-huh hmm and uh, but where is the December 2023, December 6th. Yeah, people talking about people talking about it being a alien spaceship. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Do, 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 do. December. Yeah, physicist Brian Cox. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Thank you. It's from Science News. Why did that take so long to find? Weird that it didn't come up first. Anyway, I will show you that we have uh, new stuff on this that we're going to talk about. So we're not just knocking around something that's old, sticking around a bit. And this has been updated. Oh, well, this is from March too, though. So not that new. Then we're going to talk about spiders later on, so stick around if you want to talk about spiders. Dane, natural explanation, because after all, that's the responsible thing to do, isn't it? If you keep talking about aliens, you're a bunch of nut jobs, and you definitely don't deserve to be called a legitimate news agency. And Amuamua is one of the worst examples of this. For Are you defending Tucker Carlson? I feel like that was just like, hey, Tucker's okay is what he was saying, and no, no, Tucker's not okay, gross. For example, the media continues to picture a muamua as looking something like this. Now, even astronomers admit, the most mainstream conservative astronomers admit that this is not what a muamua looks like. This is entirely too thick of an object. It's elongated, that's about right, but it's not reflective enough. It doesn't have a high enough albedo, and it's not nearly flat enough. That's one thing that's very strange about a muamua is its shape. This is actually a better idea yeah, that one is better compared to what I've seen. The uh, the, the cigar-shaped stellar cat turd thing that he complains about. I'm 
kind of on board with that. He thinks it's a lot thinner, though. Let's, let's hear how thin he thinks. Of what a Muamua might look like if it were an asteroid. But the thing of it is, it's not an asteroid. We know that for certain now. In spite of the fact that at the beginning of this year, another scientific study came out claiming or trying to put forward a theory, a very implausible theory, as to how hydrogen could have caused the observed acceleration of a Muamua as it left our solar system. And now that particular theory has been completely debunked by another scientific paper that was not written by Dr. Avi Loeb. It's actually written by an astronomer who does not believe that a Muamua is an artificial object. He has some other ideas as to what he thinks it might Brian be. Cox is who he's talking about here, <clears throat> who came who came up with this new depiction of it as more of a uh, almost disc shaped object as opposed to the cigar-shaped object. Although these are equally implausible, and he actually admits that this is a very unusual object, an object that really defies all natural explanation in many ways. It's just so strange. There are so many odd things about this object. And it is strange. It is weird the way that it didn't uh, it have outgassings like it was expected to, the way this trajectory changed. Things like that are uh, are peculiar about it. We're going to learn more as, to, as we go along. There's lots of data collected on this phenomena. And yet the media continues to claim to the mundane, the natural explanations that have been debunked now for months because that's the responsible thing to do that's the comfortable thing to do that's the thing that makes us feel safe makes us feel secure is the knowledge that there are no technologically superior alien civilizations lurking out there that might show up on our doorsteps there there may be there there may be uh the probability is low and, and you know, uh, for this situation, you know, once the there's more concise data, we'll see what the what we what it comes out with. Right now, it seems like most uh, of the scientists who are researching this, uh, uh, based uh, based on a lot of mathematical uh, formulas that I couldn't even begin to understand, are just saying that you know this is this is a rock of some kind. It is it is mineral flying through space. It's not. Uh, but if new information comes out, we'll see. Intending to mean us harm someday. We don't want to believe something as frightening as that, so we choose not to, and the media embraces that school of thought. So what does a Muamua actually look like? Well, this rendering, created by Nick Henning, a fantastic oh digital goodness. artist. Here you may go. have seen a lot of his work online in the past, does some great work, and he created this image for me. But why do I think it looks like this? Of all the configurations of an alien ship, why do I believe that a Muamua looks like this bizarre object? First of all, a quick review of all the unnatural things about a Muam. Okay, so he thinks it's some kind of space sail. So he thinks it's a solar sail um, pulling uh, like beacon drops or something. Mua. First of all, where did this object come from? Well, as near as we can tell, based on its trajectory before it encountered the sun, a Mua, Mua was moving through the galaxy at a speed that corresponded to what is called the galactic standard of rest, meaning that it was stationary in relation to the stars moving around it. It was rotating at precisely the same speed as the rate of rotation that the galaxy has in general. That makes it extremely useful for a navigational buoy for starships traveling between the stars who need a fixed point in space to lock onto. Now, this could have happened by chance, but the odds of it happening by chance are 0.2% or 500 to 1. That's so, I like how you're showing the, pointing out the low odds of this happening. Now, now, what are the odds of it happening by design? Because I think those would be even lower, right? Just by the very nature. Because the alien life form would have to form by chance 
and put the buoy there by chance. So all the probabilities that you've mentioned before apply here too. Plus you have to build an alien civilization that gets advanced enough to build this space buoy. That's what people who make high probability arguments don't understand. That anything they attach onto a high probability of natural phenomena, they have to still include the natural phenomena and then add um, additional steps along the way where you have uh, uh, intelligence evolving and then uh, taking actions, even a god argument to say uh, that, that, uh, that the same by the same principles uh, tethered in time and say the probability is so low, it's like, well, what's the probability with with the uh, what's the probability of your intervention that you that you're evoking uh, coming into existence? Uh, the teapot around, uh, around what is it? The teapot around uh, Saturn or whatever is not is not uh, probable, right? But it's not impossible. So probability arguments are weird that way. That's the first strange thing about this object. Number two, it was rotating at a very consistent and unchanging speed. This also is not unusual for an asteroid, a comet, or some other object in space. However, as you will see later on, the fact that a Muamua continued to rotate even when it was accelerating out of the solar system is an extremely unnatural thing for it to do. Also, Muamua was highly reflective, an extremely high albedo, unnaturally so for an asteroid or a comet. Now, of course, comets are pretty reflective because they're comprised primarily of ice, but Muamua was substantially more reflective than even the average comet, looking more metallic than ice. Yeah, so they, they think it maybe it's like high in, uh, in metals is what the, uh, the leading theory on that is. Like, nevertheless, there are objects in the solar system that are about as reflective as a Muamua, so that's not necessarily that unusual. Also, its length compared to its width and its thickness is highly unusual. At best, a Muamua is a flat pancake-like object. Once again, if comprised of hydrogen and ice and perhaps- Yeah, I mean, that does sound, I mean, that's fair pancake shaped is a fair description 19 meters thick uh by a by 115 and 111 so it's almost circular it's not cigar shaped like the earlier depictions was it's almost circular so it would have and it's about 19 meters thick it'd probably have proportions about like this right about like that a little more egg shaped maybe um so yeah, so you got your, now we got your Muamua flowing through the, the, the space, flipping and, and turning as a disc would do in uh, a zero G environment without any kinds of uh, uh, friction, right? To keep it in, to keep it, to make aerodynamics matter, there needs to be friction, right? Uh, he's going to argue that things are compressed into to spheres in space, but not things this small. We can go off the asteroid belt and look. Asteroids are all kinds of crazy shapes, including compressed um, and elongated and everything else. Asteroids come in all kinds of wild shapes when you're this small, because we're not talking like a moon-sized object. 115 meters is not, is not huge, right? I mean, as far as a heavenly body goes nitrogen, that sort of thing, as many astronomers have theorized that it's comprised out of in order to back up their explanations as to how a Muamua accelerated out of the solar system without any visible means of doing so. Well, how the hell did something this thin and with this low of a boiling point survive a close encounter with the sun? Oh yeah, and that's something else we need to cover. The fact that a Muamua- Sometimes an asteroid is just a cigar, says Aunt Jer. Clever. Muamua passed through the solar system on the trajectory that it did. 
Keep in mind, Oumuamua could have passed through the solar system at any point, theoretically. All of this was purely by chance, and yet it passed so close to the sun, within the orbit of Mercury. Again, a very unusual thing for it to do, and on its way out, it was less than two-tenths of an astronomical unit away from Earth closer to Earth than any planet in the solar system gets even at its closest yeah, approach. Yeah, it got a lot closer to Venus than it did to Earth. And here's the strangest detail of all, as I have alluded to throughout this video. On its way out of the solar system, Oumuamua began to accelerate non-gravitationally with no visible means of propulsion. Now, comets commonly change their trajectories and velocity. Oh, it couldn't possibly have uh, gained some velocity and trajectory from grabbing, being locked into our sun's gravitational force that's able to hold massive objects like Ju Jupiter in, in a, a locked rotation. No, it, but the sun could not possibly be responsible for this for this uh, uh, change in, uh, in, in plans for a Muamua. Because of cometary outgassing, as ice is converted into a gas by the sun's heat, and outgasses, as we have seen with a comet that's recently been passing through our solar system this year. However, a Muamua... Because a Muamua is not a comet, it doesn't have as much ice, um, it doesn't have, it, it, or any ice, as far as I know, um, like a comet would be expected to have. So there wouldn't be nearly as much outgassing. Um, not to say it shouldn't have outgassing. I don't know why it doesn't have outgassing like it's supposed to. But demonstrated no visible outgassing whatsoever. We had some of the most advanced telescopes on the planet trained on it the entire time. And we so, saw no evidence whatsoever of any cometary outgassing. Not only that, you remember I talked about the rotation before? Well, any cometary outgassing, especially that caused this big of a change in velocity, should have changed the rotational speed of the object. It should have modified it to some degree, and yet it didn't. Oumuamua continued to rotate at the same speed, the same rate, unchanged in spite of its strange acceleration. All of these things are completely unnatural. And yet, at the beginning of this... The, why? Why are they unnatural? I'm reading right here how, uh, yes, the, the, the reason for the acceleration was gravity and gas propulsion from outgassing. Uh, right here, I'm reading uh, from actual... Uh, uh, the, the James Webb and, uh, let's see, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. These are the, what they're reporting scenes. So, angry astronaut, you gotta, I mean, you got a lot of people saying, uh, saying different. This year, a paper was released by a pair of astronomers who argued that a cometary object, when subjected to galactic cosmic rays for a hundred million years, would produce enough molecular hydrogen freed from water ice, that is to say hydrogen on its own over the course of a hundred million years of galactic cosmic ray bombardment, whereby when the object actually passed through the solar system and in close proximity to the sun, that molecular hydrogen was released and produced the observed acceleration. We couldn't see the hydrogen being released because our instruments were not designed to pick up hydrogen on its own. There were many problems with this theory. First of all, they didn't explain why the rotation didn't change in spite of this massive outrush of hydrogen. We're talking a lot of hydrogen in order to be... Where does it say the rotation didn't change? Can you clarify that? You're sort for that because I don't see that anywhere that says the rotation didn't change. I don't see anything that says it did change either, but able to produce the observed acceleration. On top of that, any sort of outgassing of that magnitude should have also carried a fair amount of the object with it. In other words, there should have been debris traveling out of Oumuamua in addition to the hydrogen. No it's, such... Oumuamua is so much tinier than, than a comet, though. 
debris was observed. They didn't explain that either. Dr. Avi Loeb brought up these problems in a paper of his own. However, the media completely ignored Dr. Loeb and proclaimed this new theory as the valid explanation as to what Oumuamua actually was, because after all, Dr. Loeb is a nut job who believes in aliens. However, on November 29th of this year, another paper was released by Niels Ligertink, who's a physical chemist who studies the behavior of various elements in space. He crunched a lot of numbers, the same types of numbers that the original astronomers did, and discovered that even after a hundred million years, cosmic ray bombardment of Oumuamua would not have produced enough molecular hydrogen to produce the observed acceleration. Indeed, even after half a billion years, the numbers simply don't add up. For one thing, the object loses molecular hydrogen even in interstellar space almost as fast as it is produced. On top of that, okay. cosmic rays don't pierce that deep into that an object, better, right? especially an object made out of ice. Therefore, only the- I don't think a Moo Moo was supposed to be made out of ice, though. Is, uh, was my audio, was I coming in the wrong mic, maybe? I'm coming in the right one now, yeah. Hmm. The upper layers would have been converted into molecular morning, hydrogen, Eddie. and that simply would not have produced. Eddie, I did get your email. Uh, yeah, so I did. I did hear that. Uh, thank you for reaching out enough molecular hydrogen in an object the size of a muamua he crunched the numbers over and over again look how close it came to mercury and and discovered that even after billions of years most probably enough molecular hydrogen would not have been created by this process to produce the observed acceleration now of course that doesn't mean that he thinks that a muamua is an alien object rather he thinks that it's an object that's comprised out of a highly complex collection of chemicals perhaps a fragment of a piece of a planet of some kind a planet similar to pluto with a lot of nitrogen in it and perhaps it was nitrogen outgassing that created the acceleration, although the notion of a nitrogen iceberg was debunked years ago, so it would have to be something comprised of a unique collection of chemicals. Which is from outside our, our uh, solar system, there, it could have a lot of unique qualities that we don't see within our, our solar system. Very strange, though, that an outgassing of this collection of chemicals would only produce acceleration with invisible gases and not with some sort of gas that we could detect. Very interesting and fortunate coincidence indeed that well, something so like... if it was an alien spaceship, it would still need to propel itself, so it would still need to have um, some kind of uh, propulsion, probably gas propulsion, unless you got another theory about of course you're going to say it's the solar sail or whatever but how does you that explain this the acceleration how does the sail accelerate it through our solar like that would happen and also not impact the rotation of the object in the process the fact of the matter is all natural explanations for a muamua continue to fall flat and yet the media continues to not acknowledge this fact so what was a muamua what you're looking at right now is what the earth looked like from a muamua's perspective as it was making its way through the solar system and as you can see it ended up passing a pretty damn close to our planet not insanely close of course we're talking still over 10 million miles away but definitely close enough to get a good look at us and perhaps close enough to dispatch a probe of some us with its rock eyes with its, its rock eyes made out of rocks kind so let's have a look at our depiction of a muamua a muamua looks more like a concave seashell 
than a pancake. It is a light sail, a few millimeters thick, and Avi Loeb, along with one of his associates, crunched some numbers to determine how thin would a muamua have to be in order for solar radiation alone to push an object as big as a muamua out of the solar system at the observed speed. And it turned out to be a few millimeters thick, which exactly corresponds to the thickness of a light sail. However, a muamua does not have the albedo of a modern day light sail, indicating that it has sustained damage over time, which again makes sense. Is or it's not a light sail because it wouldn't work as one and it definitely wouldn't work as one to accelerate. That's not how sails work. <laughs> especially if it's been in interstellar space for thousands or millions of years. In addition to that, Oumuamua traveled strangely close to our planet, traveling conveniently right through the Goldilocks zone of our star. And at the same time, an object also from an interstellar destination, approximately one meter in diameter, pierced our atmosphere in 2017 from a trajectory similar to what Oumuamua's trajectory was and hit the ocean off the coast of Portugal. Did Oumuamua target a promising looking planet in the Goldilocks zone of our- Maybe the prom maybe the Goldilocks zones for them was the was Mercury because they looked awful close at Mercury and said, hey, that place might look nice. Our star and dispatch one or perhaps a number of spherical probes to check us out. Might we be seeing some of those spherical probes in our atmosphere today? It could be an asteroid. Uh, I don't think it's an asteroid. Asteroids are generally, I mean, when you say asteroid, it comes from the asteroid belt, uh, which is between Mars and Jupiter. I don't think that this is, uh, this is one of those. Um, based on its trajectory, it came from outside our solar system, but it, it doesn't mean it's not some other form of, uh, of, uh, I call heavenly bodies moving through the uh, moving through the uh, universe. It it doesn't it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be alien. It, it or doesn't have to be uh, uh, intelligently designed. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a sail. It can be a natural object with behaviors that we just don't fully understand. Today, of course, all of this is speculation, but this is a theory I'd like to put forward. A muamua is a buoy of some kind, a marker buoy, a navigational aid of some kind, and it rotates. Right, I know he's like this. Th 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 that's what I was saying, Titan. Like, look at the title of this video. Even though the media won't report on this, there is you cannot find hardly any mainstream media um, coverage on this. That it that doesn't give an extraterrestrial bend to the reporting. The mainstream media is what you're reporting, angry astronaut. You have to actually dig dig into uh, astronomy journalism to, uh, <laughs> in order to 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 understand what's really going on, right? Yeah, you have to like actually uh, delve into some like astrophysics and, and look at the and they, there's it's mathematical formulas and stuff that goes way over my head, but you know I I know that the mainstream media is is just reporting in your corner because they're ignorant about what it is. And so they just want to port, report sensation. At a specific speed so that anybody observing it can identify it easily. Granted, you would need incredibly advanced optical equipment to be able to see an object like a muamua blinking against the stellar background. However, we're talking about an alien species, many thousands. And I, uh, here's my prediction that over the next few decades we're going to find out that more of these type of small objects that move, move regularly through uh, our solar system uh, that we are we're because that we're so small that we were previously unable to, to observe them and it's not a uh, this is not a novel phenomena that's my prediction right because it, it doesn't generally uh, again this guy likes to talk about low probability that the only time 
the, the small object like this would pass through our uh, our, view, our field of view was a, within the decades that we gained the technology to to observe it. Now, that's low probability as, as it comes, right? I mean, you like low probability angry astronaut. ...of years or perhaps millions of years more advanced than us, so I wouldn't put it past their capabilities to be able to see a Muamua and use it as a navigational beacon. By chance, it happened to encounter our star, and when it did so, it was pulled in by the sun's gravitational influence. It maneuvered itself to pass ideally through the Goldilocks zone of our star to make a close approach to any planet that might look promising because this is its secondary objective, to dispatch a probe or perhaps a series of probes to any planet that might look promising in the Goldilocks zone of any star it might might encounter, and then on its way out of the solar system, it adjusted its light sail slightly to catch some solar radiation to give it a little bit of a bump on the way out, perhaps simply as a course correctional maneuver in order to eventually bring the- You're saying it's millions of years old, so this million year old technology was able to course correct. Um as it passed through our solar system with, and you said that, oh, it's a light sail, it's just damaged is why it's not very good at it. But it's still pull, drawn enough juice to get it turned around and accelerate out of our, our solar system. The object back on station so that a Muamua might reposition itself at the galactic standard of rest as it was programmed to do. Of course, this vehicle would be struggling at this point, having traveled between stars for many thousands or perhaps millions of years. Its light sail isn't in the greatest of shape, but nevertheless, it's still functional, at least at a basic level of functionality to carry out its primary tasks. It functions as a rock. And it's heading on its way out of the solar system after a brief chance encounter with a planet that might or might not have an advanced civilization on it. And now it's on its way. He's basically just paraphrasing the plot of Arthur C. Clarke's Rama series anyway. Yeah, and then Eddie says, the name sounds like it should be from a Godzilla monster. Yeah, Muamua the Hawaiian Terror. Mm-hmm. If it's an alien light sail craft meant to visit multiple systems, it might give up albi it might give up albedo for durability. You're already thinking long term there. Aunt Jer says, look, you can see the fishing wires they were using to hang it from the studio ceiling. Yep. Debunked, Aunt Jer spotted the wires. Uh out of the solar system to continue its long interminable journey. A Muamua is more of a galactic wanderer than an extraterrestrial explorer, at least as far as I think. And again, this is just a theory, but nobody else really gets an opportunity. You're using the word theory kind of loosey-goosey there. Opportunity to come up with these theories. No serious scientist would dare postulate some sort of theory of their own as to what because a theory is not a postulation you keep using the word theory when you mean hypothesis but a muamua might be at least not an artificial explanation for fear of destroying their credibility and that's the sort of thing that makes me the angriest of all by the way this particular illustration is now on t-shirts and sweatshirts, posters, all sorts of cool stuff in my angry store. And if you order your merch before the end of- Do you want an angry Amuamua sweater? The year utilizing this promo code, angry23, you will get a 10% discount on your Amuamua merch. So display your belief in an artificial explanation for Amuamua. Don't forget to like and subscribe and until the media- I really don't think anybody's gonna know what it would mean if I walked around wearing that shirt. They'd be like, what's that? I think it was like an album cover or something, I'm sure. Stops depicting a Muamua as a giant interstellar cat turd. I urge all of you to stay angry about space. Why be angry about space? I like space. I'm happy about space and stuff we learn. Not angry. What a silly thing to, to expect. And his 
I mean, people love him. People are like, oh, yeah, thanks for reporting on what the mainstream media doesn't report, even though, like, keep the good work, love your reporting, you deserve more subscribers. Like, this is this, what the mainstream media says, too. That's why he's able to throw to get his stuff together so easily. Because uh, reporting on... Uh, reporting the most uh, outlandish of explanations for natural phenomena is what the media does first, right? Generally. Depends on your source, but yeah, you can usually find people reporting things that are crazy about it first. That's why you have to come in to do you know, like science news and stuff like that to get some actual facts. Hmm. A mua may be a chip knocked off an icy a Pluto like exoplanet. Hmm. Our first interstellar visitor may have been a shard of nitrogen ice from another solar system. Neat. Since its discovery, the interstellar object known as Amuamua has defied explanation. First spotted in 2017, has been called an asteroid, a comet, and an alien spaceship. But Reese and even has a link to where they reported on that. Even Science News reported it as an alien spaceship. So stop with the, oh, the mainstream media won't tell you this. Yes, they will. They won't shut up about it. But the researchers think they have finally, uh, uh, finally have the uh, mystery object pegged. It could be a shard of nitrogen ice broken off of a Pluto-like planet orbiting another star. The idea is pretty compelling, says uh, Garrett Levine, a, or probably Levine, an astronomer at Yale University not involved in the work. It does a really good job of matching the observation. Amuamua's uh, origins have been a mystery because it looks like the sort of thing, like a comet, but not quite. After uh, whipping by the sun, Amuamua zoomed away slightly faster than gravity alone would allow. This happens when ice on the sunlit side of a comet vaporized, giving them a little rocket-like boost in speed. But unlike comets, Amuamua did not appear to have a tail from typical cometary ices, such as carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide stringing off of it. Alan Jackson, not the, uh, not the summertime blues Alan Jackson, Alan Jackson and Stephen Dench, planetary scientists at Arizona State University at Tempe, set out to discover what other kinds of evaporating ice could give off or give a muamua a big enough nudge to explain its movement. The pair reported their results on March 17th at the Virtual Unit Lunar and Planetary Science Conference and the two studies uh, published online on March 16th in the Journal of Geophysical Research Planets. The amount of force that a vaporizing ice exerts on a comet depends on factors such as how much the ice heats up when it absorbs energy, the mass of its molecules, and even the ice's crystal, stru or crystal structure, but by calculating the rocket-like push on a muamua, if it were made of ice such as nitrogen, hydrogen, and water, we learned that nitrogen ice would work perfectly well, Dish says. Because the nitrogen uh, ice covers outer solar system bodies such as Pluto and Neptune's moon Triton, but not small objects like comets, a mua mua is probably a chip off of a Pluto-like exoplanet, the researchers reported. To determine how realistic the scenario is, Jackson Dash calculated how many chunks of nitrogen ice would have been knocked off a Pluto-like body in the early solar system. Back then, the uh, Kuiper belt of objects beyond Neptune was much more crowded than it is today, including thousands of Pluto-like bodied uh, ice with nitrogen. But some 4 billion years ago, Neptune's orbit expanded. That disruption caused many Kuiper belt objects to collide with each other 
and most sailed out of the solar system altogether. Under such chaotic conditions, collisions could have broken trillions of nitrogen ice fragments off Pluto-like bodies. Jackson and Dash estimated if on if other planets this <clears throat> excuse me if other planetary systems throw out as many shards of ice uh, those objects could make up about four percent of the bodies in interstellar space that would make seeing an object like a mua mua mildly unusual but not exceptional the researchers said when I first started reading it, I was skeptical, but it does tick a lot of the necessary boxes, says Scott Shepard, an astronomer at the Carnegie Institution of Science in Washington, D.C., not involved in the work. It's definitely plausible that this could be a fragment of an icy dwarf planet, but plausible, he noted, does not necessarily mean correct. Amuamua is now too far away to confirm this idea with more observations, but the upcoming Vera Rubin Observatory and European Space Agency's Comet Interceptor mission could detect more interstellar objects, says Yun Zhang, a planetary scientist at Cote d'Azur Observatory in Nice, France, not involved in this research. The Vera Rubin Observatory is expected to spot on average one interstellar visitor per year, and the Comet Interceptor spacecraft may actually visit one. Um, getting, clo getting a closer look at more of these objects could narrow down with uh, possible explanations for Amuamua are most reasonable. Yeah. So, cool stuff, but mm, alien... Alien technology? I don't think so. I just don't, but uh, Angry Astronaut thinks so. So if you enjoyed this person and covering their videos, let me know and we can revisit them again in the future. Uh, but yeah, that's been our cryptic corner for this morning. Uh, kind of a shorter one, but yeah, he didn't he didn't have too much uh, uh, other than, than just speculation and assertion to offer. He didn't have any numbers or anything to counter what we see from the experts what do you think though do you think a muamua was a just a space rock do you think a muamua was uh an alien uh, spaceship a uh a solar sail well let me know in the comments down below um please remember to be kind take care and we will see you next time